right now, a 15-year debate that has finally been settled. Also, the dramatic rise in gas prices. All this and more, 96 News starts right now. Welcome to 96 News. This is the week of October 8th. I'm Vanessa Mieses. And I'm Matthew Hall. After 15 years of negotiations between the government and the rebels, the Philippines have reached a preliminary agreement with Muslim rebels. This marks a major milestone after decades of trouble in the nation's south. President Benigno Aquino III described the deal as a framework agreement for establishing a new autonomous region that will be named Bangsamoro and will be administered by Muslims in the south. The new region is expected to replace the current one by 2016 when the president's terms end. Gas prices continue to rise in California. California gas prices rose to an all-time high this weekend, according to AAA. The average price for a gallon of gas cost $4.65, beating the old record of $4.61 uh, in June of 2008. California took over the top spot from Hawaii for the most expensive gas in the country. Californians on average are paying 24 more cents than uh, Hawaiians who previously paid the most. And in some locations, motors paid more than $5 for a gallon of gas. The dramatic surge came after there was a power outage at a Southern California refinery, refinery reducing supply in an already fragile and volatile market. Patrick DeHaan, senior petroleum analyst at GasBuddy.com, predicts the average could peak as high as $4.85. While the national average is at $3.81, the highest for this time of year. However, many states have seen a decrease in prices over the past few weeks. ExxonMobil, the owner of the Southern California refinery, said it returned to normal production on Friday and after a fire in a refinery in Northern California, say officials said it would be coming back in online and prices should start to fall soon. Well, I hope those high gas prices don't sneak their way to Florida. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Molly Dodd has the latest for our weather. Molly. Thanks, Vanessa. Tuesday, we'll see a high of 89 and a low of 70. Wednesday and Thursday, the highs will be in the upper 80s with lows in the upper 60s. And for Friday, expect sunny weather. We'll have a high of 87. And for the weekend, the highs will be in the mid to upper 80s during the day and low 70s at night. Expect rain in some areas. For 96 News, I'm Molly Dodd. Back to you. Thanks, Molly. Well, Lakeland is celebrating best breast cancer awareness and reporter Victoria Garcia shows us more. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and millions across the United States are raising awareness. Here at Southeastern University, the women's soccer team is raising awareness through an event called Pink Out. Pink Out started uh, three years ago with uh, the former athletic director. We thought it was a great idea because we've had so many of our players, past and present, who have someone in their life who's been affected by breast cancer. According to the U.S. Breast Cancer Statistics, one in every eight women, or 225,000 women, are diagnosed with breast cancer each year. There's players on the team who have been affected by it personally, and we're like a family, so if it affects them, it affects us as well. Doing this has made me think about breast cancer personally more than, than I probably ever have. According to Mayo Clinic, there are several ways that may reduce your risk of getting breast cancer and detecting it early. Limit alcohol usage, control your weight, get plenty of physical activity, and get a yearly mammogram screening. Because of early detection in the past years, breast cancer survivor rates have gone up. The effects, and I've seen people who are in my church who've been affected by it, and um, it's really sad, and so I'm really proud of my team for being able to support this fight. I know, like, other programs, they do it, like, the whole month of October, and I think that would be awesome if, like, it was just a long-term thing that people just, like, became a part of for a whole month and that would be awesome. For 96 News, I'm Victoria Garcia. The California-based SpaceX company will launch its Dragon capsule to the International Space Station this week. This will be the first of a dozen space station mission, missions under the $1.6 billion contract with NASA. 
NASA is counting on private business to restock the space station now that the shuttles are retired. The newest Dragon capsule will carry about 1,000 pounds of food, clothes, experiments, and equipment. The three-man uh, three residents will get a frozen treat when the capsule arrives later this week, a chocolate vanilla swirl ice cream. Even more cargo will come back with the Dragon as it parachutes into the Pacific Ocean and at the end of October. None of the Russian, European, or Japanese cargo ships can bring anything back because they are destroyed during re-entry. SpaceX, who is owned by PayPal co-founder Elon Musk, is working to convert the unmanned Dragon capsule into a vessel that could carry astronauts into space in three years. Other U.S. companies are also working to carry astronauts into space. But in the meantime, Americans must ride Russian rockets at a steep price. An explorer celebrates an accomplishment that has never been done before. British explorer Felicity Aston has become the first woman to ski across Antarctica alone. The expedition was accomplished after a difficult 59 days. Aston said the biggest challenge for her was coping with the long-term solitude and dealing with hallucinations. Reporter Johnny Fernandez shows how a Lakeland organization is reaching out to the community. With the peanuts and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the teacher. <laughs> Laughter and joy is what Dr. Michael Staples strives for every day as executive Help director of Anchor House Ministries in Auburndale, Florida. Boys that call this home learn how to become productive people to society. They develop independent living skills like cooking, laundry, and budgeting. The residents are also exposed to higher education and career opportunities. Dr. Staples explains how each resident is different. So we'll sit down and we'll talk about, okay, what's your educational needs and what are your educational goals? What are your life skill needs and your life skill goals? Um, what are some of your goals in terms of working? Uh, what are some of your goals in terms of, of emotional healing? And we'll look at every area of their life, their social life and included, things that they want to do to develop friendships and to experience normalcy and to, and to be like any other kid, not just a kid who's in the, in the system. And we'll develop a plan on each of these bases for the kids. Within the past five years, Anchor House Ministries has had a million dollar turnaround in finances. With more and more boys entering the home, they are now in the process of completing a master site plan for their future facilities. Reporting from Auburndale, Johnny Fernandez, 96 News. Thanks, Johnny. Now we're over to Roxanne Garcia with sports. Thanks, guys. Well, this past Sunday, the Washington Redskins hosted the Atlanta Falcons. The win for the Redskins seemed pretty promising until the third quarter when Robert Griffin III left the game after taking a big hit from linebacker Sean Weatherspoon. Redskin coach Mike Shanahan said that Griffin was diagnosed with a mild concussion and couldn't let the coaches know what the score was or what quarter it was at the time he was asked. After the Atlanta Falcons knocked RG3 out of the game, Matt Ryan kept passing and kept the momentum going until he finally scraped up enough points to give his team its first 5-0 start in franchise history. The Falcons currently have the best record in the NFL, followed by the Houston Texans, which are 4-0. Finally, the MLB postseason is here, and man, has it been a good one. Last night was the first game between the New York Yankees and Baltimore Orioles. The game remained tied 2-2 until the top of the ninth inning when Russell Martin hit a solo home run that led to five scored runs in that inning. The Yankees ended up winning the game 7-2. Also in baseball, the Reds are leading the series against the San Francisco Giants 2-0, and the American League, the Tigers, also leading the series 2-0 against the Oakland Athletics. For 96 Sports, I'm Roxanne Garcia. Back to you. Thank you, Roxanne. That's all the time we have left. Keep it on 96 News for the latest in breaking news, weather, and sports. I'm Matthew Hall. I'm Vanessa Mieses. Have a great week, everyone.